My name is Evan. Uh, I'm 19 years old. I never f***ing learned how to read. Standard Humans Podcast, take two. Or take one, I guess, since the last take one episode zero. Number two. I think that was, that was real professional. That was the most professional um, introduction to a podcast I have ever heard. <laughs> we are already on our way to being multimillionaires with this. Just it's call be me good. Joe Rogan. All right, Joe. Well, I think okay, thanks. I think after the last episode, the Zeros episode, yeah. the burning question in everyone's minds is: Did you finish your Earth One Twenty One assignment? I were you I did, held actually. accountable? No, I was you, good. Good. It's working. The podcast is working. <laughs> accountability. It works. I actually totally forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I did. I was good. <laughs> nice, was good fine. stuff. All right. And yeah, then the one last thing that I wanted to follow up on is that we talked a little bit about taking business expenses and stuff. Uh, I just want to point mm-hmm. out that's not actual advice. Uh, we're not accountants. Please speak to your accountant. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if, like, don't, if you follow any of our advice, that's, that's, that's like only, only maybe advised by anybody. I don't. Yeah, like, I, I think I went on specifically saying um, you could expense, like, internet and cell phones to a business if you're self Yeah, I, absolutely. I, yeah, really? I, I really have no idea either. I don't have a business. Yeah, but, no, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We will at some point. Yep. Probably. Tax purposes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get into this yeah. game. Anyways, let's get on to the topic of the day, yep. which is exercise. And physical activity. Yes. Not being people from Wally. Yeah. Trying to be the anti Wallies. No, Wally's cool. But it's just the people from it. Yeah, that's fair. I love that movie. Anyways. Yeah, fitness and stuff. So like we're both we both played sports before. We have played uh many sports. We've played sports together before. Yeah. Is that just like the one year of hockey? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> One still time. counts. Yeah, still counts. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. So yeah, I was thinking that exercise would be a good place to start because it's something that everyone, or pretty much everyone, is talking about all the time and is saying that they always need to do it more and want to do it yeah. better. And no matter who you are, moving around at least a little bit is probably mm-hmm. good. Yeah. So that's what I've kind of thought. Like, even if you you don't know where you're going, uh, you're you're always going to need you. And your health is a big part of that, yeah. and it will improve a lot of aspects of your life. Yeah. So it's something that, you know, it's good to think about at least like, you know, once in a while. So I guess we'll, we'll go through like the backgrounds. So what, so what, what have you done like in the past in this sort of physical exercise? Yeah. So generally, my history with like exercise and um, weight in general is I think I've been pretty overweight for most of my life hasn't been quite good well not like 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 if you look at like if i look at like my scales like bmi charts it's like overweight obese that kind of stuff it's i've been usually overweight like slash obese for like a while which isn't good yeah yeah actually but (laughs) yeah no i'm actually like I'm almost into normal now. I've been doing really good lately, yeah, so that's, that's exciting. Good, I'm like, you look fine. I don't know. Yeah, I know. It's great. I'll, I'll get into it a little bit. I got to the point where it's like, I can't breathe when I'm tying my shoes. Dang. And I was yeah. like, wow, this, this is not okay. This needs, yeah. this needs to change. Part of it was I uh, started looking at like what I was eating, and I actually tried to try and cut out meat a little bit. And... I found some success with that. I don't think it was because of the fact that I was cutting out meat itself, but more so just the fact that I was looking at the food more. Yeah. And like actually paying some attention. That is actually related to, I read an article that basically said exactly that. It's like vegetarians and vegans are usually less overweight, not because they're vegetarians and vegans. Like it's still definitely possible to be overweight on a vegetarian or vegan diet. It's just because they're actually like, paying attention to everything they eat like checking ingredients and stuff to make sure there's no meat or if you're vegan no like animal products inside so Mm -hmm. it's like you're less likely to buy something if you see that it's like you know corn syrup and hydrogenated oils and stuff inside if you're just looking like just subconsciously yeah it's kind of weird a little while ago i heard someone say like yeah, I'm a, I'm a vegan, but like not one of those healthy ones. I eat chips and stuff like all the time. Good on you. <laughs> it's like what? 
<laughs> you're already editing your food choices. Like, yeah. come on, <laughs> just yeah. be healthy. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, I know, no, right? don't worry. I'm not like healthy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm like unhealthy. I'm cool. Don't worry. I'm a cool <laughs> vegan. Don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> you don't have to judge me. But yeah, anyways, I did that and I started um, going to the gym at my school pretty regularly. Mostly just running around the track. Yeah. Like I'd only run for like five minutes, but I try yeah. and do that like every day or every day of the week. You never get faster. Damn, that's a lot of running actually. If you go every day. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was kind of thinking was my goal was not so much intensity. Like I'd only run like a kilometer, yeah. but if I did it consistently, it starts to add up. And, and then you'll get faster and exactly. it'll be easier. You can run farther in less time, you know. Yeah, exactly. That was kind of the goal. And then also the other goal was just to get into the habit of going yeah. regularly and convincing himself to like get out there. Yeah, that's I mean that's most of the most of the battle is just going somewhere. Like it's easy to just not go, but if you're already all in your gear at the gym, you're not going to like go into the door and be like, "Nah." <laughs> <laughs> like you won't just turn right back around because you're already there. Yeah, so. you you, sh- you you feel you would feel worse if you turned right around. Like people are judging you. Like he just walked in and then left. Yeah, like, what? like what did he just like piss his pants or something? <laughs> like what happened? Yeah, so I tried doing that and I got into the um, rowing machine a little bit. Okay, but that was mainly it. No, I never got into anything too complicated, just because then I'd have to like think about routine, like weights, different muscle groups. It was just effort yeah. that I didn't want to go through. I wanted to mostly focus on just getting out there. And it worked pretty well. I think I lost like 30 pounds over like a Dang. semester or two. That's pretty, was pretty good. good. Yeah. That's like one-year-old child. There you go. I lost a child that year. Hey, where's the child? It's gone. Damn. I lost it at the gym. That sucks. <laughs> yep. Okay. So Anyways. And that's up to today. That's pretty much up today. The one other thing is that over the summer... I saw a little bit of success, actually, even though I wasn't working out at all. Yeah. I think that that was just because I was getting, like, eight hours of sleep consistently. Yeah, and probably paying cool. at least a little more attention to what you eat. Yeah, definitely more attention to it. I got into meal planning for a little bit, which yeah. was cool. Like, getting those, like, black plastic containers off of Amazon, yeah, like, a bunch yeah. of them, and putting in all the food groups and things. Mm-hmm. So that was really good. I like that. Something, I need to do that more. Something about meal planning recently that yeah. was really funny. My girlfriend had rice, like leftover rice, and whatever she made. I don't remember, like chickpeas or something, for lunch that she brought to work. Mm-hmm. And she works in she works in England, and everybody there was convinced that eating leftover reheated rice will make you sick from food poisoning. And what I do every Sunday, I get five containers. Use one for each day of the week's lunch, and I just cook all the rice on Sunday. So I cook my rice for Friday on mm-hmm. Sunday, yeah, and just eat it on Friday. Mm-hmm. I do that every week. Yeah, <laughs> I've never gotten sick once from it. So I don't know if I'm really lucky or yeah, I reheat rice too. I, I don't yeah, know. like I've never like I've never even heard that here. Yeah, like is that just a weird England thing? <laughs> Like an urban I, legend, like in Korea, they believe that fans will take like oxygen or something. I I don't know. That yeah. is odd. That is odd. I don't think there's any merit to that, but like, like well, I looked it up, and it's like it is on the World Health Organization. It's like it can make you little little ill hmm. or whatever. But literally, never has happened to me. I've done it for like many months in a row. <laughs> so I don't know. Okay, that yeah. that is odd. Maybe I just get the purest rice. That's probably it, yeah. Yeah, probably. So yeah, that pretty much brings me up to where yeah, I am right now. Weird. Not getting sick from rice. Yeah, exactly. It's been a good time. But yeah, the issue I'm having right now is just that I haven't been able to be bothered to go to the gym if I'm not like going to school every day. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, so what I'll, about go you? Over, I'll go over yeah. my whole history, I guess. Yeah, do it. My whole history. So I was born Lay it all December out. 9th, 1999. Okay, so... I guess I was a pretty active, like, kid. I played hockey and football, like, American football. <laughs> well, I only played that for a couple of years, but I played hockey all throughout. Oh, I didn't know and you played football. Yeah. Oh. I was defensive because I was a little bit of a chunky lad. So, 
Oh, it was like early on that you played football. Uh, I was maybe like between the ages of like ten or twelve. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was. I played soccer every day at recess and whatever. So all throughout up till like grade six, I was very. Uh, I was very regular, healthy kid. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, in grade seven, eight, you know, you go to a different school. Uh, our high school actually started at grade seven, so we went to the high school. Yeah. Um, and you don't. Like, we would have three small, like, three short recesses in elementary school, and I would play soccer all throughout for each one, which mm-hmm. doesn't feel like exercise because it's really fun, but yeah. it was, like, a large amount of exercise, and I would just also, like, do more stuff like that just for fun. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, and so in middle school, at, at recess, we stopped doing that. Uh, yeah, it was not reason. cool. No, it was yeah. not cool. Um, Unless you were one of the people who went and, like, Played tackle football and hit that from the teachers. Yeah, because you weren't allowed that was to play cool. tackle football. I didn't really do that. Yeah, but, me neither. But that was cool. Yeah. Um. Now we just play like mobile games, just sitting in the corner in the yard or whatever, like walk around the field. Damn sometimes. kids in their mobile games. Yeah. 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 Exactly. We played Angry Birds. No, not Angry Birds. We played Alchemist. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, that was a great game. Yeah. Yeah. That was sick. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, I, I had a lot less daily incidental physical exercise yeah so i i became in grade seven eight quite a chunky little lad even more than before because <laughs> before, before i was like healthy it was just like sort of stocky because oh, okay just my, yeah like build i guess <laughs> um but yeah i didn't really exercise that much and i would just i didn't pay attention at all to what i ate because i was grade seven eight you know you don't you yeah don't do that, when you're that age. yeah um you shouldn't really have to but yeah i would yeah. like it's like, you know, poutine and burgers or anything. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, oh, man, fine. ski trips at that point. Ooh. Food there was the best. Yeah, we like we used to go skiing with school. Yeah. Um, And you, you would, for a ski trip, the standard fare was you, you'd ski for the whole time, whatever, and you'd come in for, for dinner, for a break, and you would get a poutine, a rock star, and a cheeseburger, drink. you and maybe a cheeseburger yeah. or something, yeah, and maybe some onion rings or like yeah, something like that, yeah, and that would just be what you eat, yeah, and then you would you would try not to throw up, and then you'd keep skiing. <laughs> it was an absolute feast, yeah. Um, but so then, yeah, through stuff like that, I was just like sort of unhealthy, and then at the end of grade eight, I in grade seven eight, incidentally, I was also like not a good student. Oh, really? Which is a really good time to not be a good student. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Because <laughs> you get it out of your system. Yeah, yeah. Um, But yeah, I didn't get very good grades at all. Uh, and didn't really like school at all. Um, I can't remember my yeah. grades from that. I, I assume it was like B's. I don't know. I, yeah, I remember, I remember specifically because I was like, damn. At the end of grade, I'm like, yeah. this sucks. I'm getting bad grades. <laughs> um, so I sort of was like, I want to be a better student. And I also was like, I want to stop being chubby. <laughs> <laughs> and over between the the end of grade eight and the beginning of grade nine, probably a period of about four months, mm-hmm. I I both had a growth spurt, so I grew taller, and also started like sort of caring about health. Mm-hmm. Um, because I remember I started lo- like I started like getting more like fit just by. Like, all I would do was pay more attention to just not eating a ton of sweets all the time and bike every day if I could. Okay. And that was it. And I became a regular lanky teenager <laughs> after after that. So, like, I came back in grade nine and everyone was like, oh, my God, you look really different. Because I was, like, had a growth spurt and, you know, was less chubby and stuff. And so then all, all throughout high school, I sort of was more was was focused on that kind of thing it was also around then that i started being vegetarian it was like grade nine or ten um just for not for health reasons for like ethical reasons um and that was easy because i was living at home and you know my, my mom would make food for for me it was like it was cool it was like chickpeas and stuff and then yeah i would i basically went all throughout high school i did a lot of running uh, oh, that's another thing that started me getting interested in health is my mom in grade eight signed us up in the summer for the Ottawa race weekend 5k. So that felt like the longest distance ever back then. 5k. I remember it took like 40 minutes and I was like, I feel like I'm going to die <laughs> every time we were running. But 
then I sort of fell in love with it and really started running, like really started enjoying running. Um, and I did cross country and track all throughout high school. Did like wrestling as well. Did ultimate frisbee and stuff. I did a lot of sports and just tried to eat really healthy. Um, so that was sort of, that was sort of my thing and, uh, until grade twelve. And then you know I moved away from home, went to university, uh, where you're a lot. I was a lot more busy. I also I was living in a dorm and the food was not very good. <laughs> That, so I like, yeah. didn't like it. There weren't many vegetarian options. Oh, so yeah. I think it was like January of first year. I moved to pescatarianism, um, which is where you eat vegetarian, but you eat fish. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that just that gives, gives you more options at the... Yeah, it gave me okay. like, I have at least like a tuna sandwich or something. That's fair. Um, Or yeah. like if they're making like fish fillets or whatever, I could eat that. But I don't, like I definitely ate less than normal uh, mm-hmm. first year. Because I lost, I lost like fifteen or twenty pounds. Also, because I wasn't, I wasn't working out or anything, so I lost like both muscle and fat. And yeah, then I went home for Christmas, and mom's like, "What the hell? You're too skinny!" Like, so <laughs> I started eating fish. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I opened up a few more options, but I still was like, I was running occasionally okay. and stuff, but I wasn't getting much exercise. Mm-hmm. I was just like skinny and unfit. <laughs> oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I finished up that year and I stopped being a vegetarian because there were like just not enough options and whatever when you're not living at home. Yeah, so I, I did that. Uh, and then the summer between first and second year, I just started lifting weights for like the first time ever because mm-hmm. I got a gym membership. Oh, and yeah. I remember I saw, I specifically remember like a huge gym inspiration for me was I saw Avengers Infinity War and I'm like, damn. These guys are buff as hell. That's <laughs> true. I do that? Yeah. So I just, yeah, so I started working out and stuff uh, and eating meat and, like, you know, seeing, watching, like, protein intake and stuff. Yeah. Slight side so, note that yeah, the, those guys getting ready for movies, I've seen some of the videos by, like, a guy who trains Hollywood actors yeah. for those kinds of roles, and it takes, like, three months for them to do that, to go from nothing to... Well, they're like, but they're like Extremely pretty fit guys well. before. Like relatively fit, yeah. Yeah, which is they're insane. like, but like, they'll train twice a day with the guys. That's ridiculous. I know, right? Yeah. They're like sixty to ninety. Minutes oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's quite unattainable. Yeah, those guys on screen, like you can't look like that for like forever. forever. Yeah, yeah, you can look good though, but you can't, yeah, <laughs> you can't you can't be like looking like Thor for your entire life all the time. Yeah, no, because, unless you're really committed. Unless you're like. Which the Rock, who gets paid millions of dollars to do that. That's fair. If you get paid millions of dollars to be in shape, then... Yeah. You be in shape all the time. Then well, that's just enough. your job. Yeah. You don't have to, like, go to work or go to school. <laughs> you can just literally work out and eat and sleep and yeah. do whatever you want. And be in the occasional action movie. Yeah. Then that's cool. Then, yeah, that's pretty cool. But, yeah. Yeah, that'd so, be so then, pretty nice. Yeah, so I started, I started working out and, like, specifically, like, act, the first time in my life, like, actually going to the gym and lifting weights and stuff. Um, and I was like, wow, this works. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it was, it was pretty fun. Um, and I did that and I gained probably in, in about, in about eight months, I probably gained like 35 pounds, hmm. mostly of muscle, okay. I would say. So I like gained back what I lost plus like 20 pounds. And then, yeah, I kept doing that. Uh, and then this, this winter I started playing hockey again, mm-hmm. uh, cause I stopped somewhere through high school. And I was like, damn, my cardio is bad. Because I would, I would get on and then after like a one minute, 15 second shift, be like gassed. And be like, shit, I need to do more cardio. So, then, so now I'm sort of doing like calisthenics and cardio because I, I play sports again. And, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're doing right now kind of all the kind of things. You have, you have sports and weightlifting and cardio and yeah. push-ups and it's, it's, it's the stuff. summer so i don't like going into the gym as much because i like to be outside yeah so the weightlifting i do is basically there's a really big tractor tire at a high school down the road yeah that i can work out at like i'll do like tire flips and like just you know use it as a weight for like shoulder press and stuff oh, okay. and do that um and actually what i'm doing now is 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats a day. Okay. Pretty much one, just when I wake up. Hmm. And that's good for, like, I do that, and then I play a sport in the day, and that'll keep you pretty fit. That sounds pretty good. It is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually harder than I thought it would be. Yeah, no, that, that's tough. 
because I'm like, there's no, there's no weights at it. That's not hard. But then it is. <laughs> yeah, no, like yeah. that. That takes a little while to get to. Mm. Like I used to be able oh, to not just all at once. I do like sets of twenty five and then for oh, push-ups. okay. So yeah. 20, 25 times four for push ups. Like throughout the day, two for sit ups. No, I mean I do I do the sets like one after the other, but I take oh, like okay. a minute or two right, break in between right. sets of twenty five push ups, and then a minute or two break in between sets of fifty sit ups, and then I can do the squats all at once. Okay. Because my legs are bees, man. But <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I do now. Yeah, no. Like at one point back when I was doing like uh, the CrossFit. Yes, CrossFit. You Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I was a I would. I was able to just drop and do like 50 push-ups whenever it was all good mm-hmm. and like however many squats or whatnot. Yeah. But a couple of weeks ago, I did like maybe like 20 or 30 squats and just ripped up my muscle. Oh. <laughs> I was like, ooh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I, was, I was like limping around because <laughs> I could barely walk. <laughs> you know, you stretch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that was not fun. It was like hurting for days. It was not good. Ooh. Do you stretch in CrossFit? Yeah, or well, you stretch afterwards. Okay, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I do too usually. Yeah, yeah. Not as much as I should, but usually after sports, I like start to do toe touches and whatever, you know. Just all the ones that you did in track. The ones yeah, that I remember. Just the basic bending and. Yeah. Or Taekwondo. Uh, yeah. I used to do Taekwondo too. Oh, cool. Yeah. I think I did that for like a year. I think yeah. I did it in like grade one or something. Oh, okay, I did it like grade, grade 11 and 12. Oh, okay. But then, like, it hurt, so I quit. It hurt? Did you get yeah. in the face or something? I don't know. I think it's just, like, I didn't want to be, like, fighting people. And I was like, Mom, um, I want to stop. Yeah. No, I was fine with it because wrestling is... Oh, yeah, fair enough. Literally the most physical sport you can have. Like, you can't... You obviously can't punch people or anything, but it's just, like... Literally the entire sport is just, like, pressing on another human. So you got to get real comfortable with that, you know? Yeah. It's very... It's not for everybody. <laughs> yeah, no. I've been thinking it would be good to try and get into one of those um, martial arts type of programs, partly because when you hear them talk about it, there's a certain like mindset that comes with it, yeah. that it, uh, a confidence. So like you never actually have to use the stuff in real life because you know you can use it, so people just don't mess with you. Yeah, that's actually that's like calmness. What, that's what my uh, master whoever. Oh yeah, uh, in Taekwondo, I don't know what they call him actually, because we just we just call him Master. Sifu. Insert his name. So yeah, that works. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. But yeah, he he was he's gone on about that. He's like, obviously don't like don't fight people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you can avoid it. He was big on like use your use your uh brain and then use your hands to defend yourself. Yeah. And then use your feet to leave if you can. I mean, as a person who's never been in a fight ever, which I am, I would say I've like out of the martial arts I've done, like wrestling, taekwondo and muay thai, I would say probably go for muay thai cuz it's probably the least aggressive learning curve um because like you're for taekwondo you're not going to know how to do like a 360 high kick in like a day, <laughs> but for Muay Thai, it's basic movements. There's nothing like insane. It's just like it relies a lot on. It'll get you physically fit as well because it's it's literally kickboxing. Yeah, so it's like there's nothing crazy. There's like you can throw punches, you can throw elbows, you can throw knees, you can throw kicks, and that's pretty much it. But yeah, for fitness, I would say wrestling was definitely good. But it's it's again not for everybody because you literally you're getting very up close to people. <laughs> Yeah, if you're trying to go for fitness, I would go with something like Muay Thai. Muay Thai is pretty good. You would start the first hour. is two-hour class. The first hour is 15 minutes warm-up and then 45 minutes of fitness, which would be skipping because, you know, it's boxing. So you do a lot of skipping, a lot of push-ups, a lot of sit-ups, a lot of shadow boxing. And then the second hour would be sparring. So you get a partner. One of you would get the hand pads and the person would, like, punch it, kick it. Uh, sometimes you spar, but you bo- you both be wearing pads like on your stomach. You'd have a big pad and like whatever, so you wouldn't actually be trying to like get the person. You'd just be aiming for the pad, um, because we're just <laughs> we're just taking the class. We're not trying to we're not trying to be the heavyweight world champion. So yeah, and then you'd stretch at the end. So it's pretty cool. 
That sounds pretty good, actually, yeah. yeah. Very good. I might have to look into that. Mm-hmm. That would be cool. So, I, I, so another thing that you said you, you sort of wanted to talk about. Yeah, I also wanted to hear a little bit about, um, you said you started lifting weights, but I said I didn't do that because it's too much effort to figure it out. Yeah. What, what do you do? How do you go about like um, figuring that out, what to do? Yeah, I actually just got it from the internet. Oh, okay. I got a, a schedule from the internet. It was, it was actually a really good beginner lifting schedule. It was upper lower split. So one day you do all the lifts that work at your upper body muscles. Okay. One day all the lifts that do lower body muscles and accessory muscles. What's an like, accessory muscle? Like, like abs. Abs. Okay. And traps, maybe. Traps. Like you know, like you, like this thing. <laughs> he's big, pointing at yeah. the at your shoulder yeah basically. it's like it's between your shoulder and your neck okay yeah shoulder and the neck uh-huh. okay shoulders Ye- basically no nah, nah. no <laughs> no your shoulder your shoulder is is like your your uh what do you call it <laughs> i'm really bad a shoulder your lateral deltoid your frontal deltoid your deltoid is your shoulder muscle Okay. And then it's 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 the muscle right between your neck and your deltoid muscle is your trap. You work it from like lifting heavy stuff and doing shrugs. It's what you use when you shrug. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's like an, an accessory muscle. But it was huh. it was uh, four four times a week. You would do. It gave you the upper and lower workouts. Okay. And the upper workout was something like, you know, you do bench press, you do overhead press, you do incline bench press you do bent rows yeah those ones yeah you yeah. bent rows that those sort of thing um maybe some abs uh, and then the second day you would do squat the romanian deadlift curls because you didn't really work your biceps on the first day and maybe also some abs and that sort of thing and then you do upper lower rest upper lower weekend off okay um, and I just sort of followed that, like, to the letter. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it also gave me a rough macronutrient split, which was nice. It was, like, you should have between 2,500 and 3,000 calories a day if you're mm-hmm. trying to actually make progress. Because if you're, if you're lifting weights, you're sort of tearing down your muscles, mm-hmm. and then you get muscular by rebuilding them so if you're at like an extreme calorie deficit like if you're a grown man eating like 1800 calories a day you're not going to be rebuilding much mm-hmm. so you don't really get stronger so it gave me uh, that yeah um and you should have probably like this many grams of protein per day it was probably like between 150 to 180 i think which okay. is pretty pretty high protein I have no idea. Relatively. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Sure. I'll take your word for that. Yeah. Usually for like fitness stuff, people say between 0.75 to 1 gram per kilo. Or no, sorry, gram per pound. Okay. So if you weigh 180 pounds, you should have around 170 grams of protein per day. Okay. 165, 170. That sort of thing. Sure. Which, right. is, which is quite a lot. But so I, I just sort of did that. It was it was a slow start, um, but I did it for the whole summer, yeah. which in university is four months. Yeah. So right when you start lifting is when you make the most quick progress. If you're following every week a four a, a three to five day workout plan consistently, that's a good plan. You're eating right. You know you're sleeping. I was sleeping well because I could you know mm-hmm. it was the summer and I was living at home so I would go to work at like 8 30 okay come out at 4 30 my walk home the gym was between my work and my house so I would just go to the gym on the way home so I'd get home at like six eat dinner then do whatever I wanted go to bed wake up and that was like most of my summer so it was easy uh and then so for in four months doing that you can you can make a lot of progress in, in building muscle if you've never done it before. Because in the first, probably the first year, you can make like a crazy amount of progress um, if, you're, if you're very consistent. Uh, just because like your muscles are adapting to stimulus they've never had before and stuff. 
so it it makes it easy and then after after like two years it's it's quite slow progress i'm not there yet but i've been told it's 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 quite slow but even even now the, the like i don't i don't lift as much because i'm doing more sports and like calisthenics and stuff which is body weight exercises but it is it is still it is still like definitely slower progress unless i'm starting an exercise i've never done before actually i noticed for for instance tire flipping i'd never done that before like two months ago or a month or two ago and i could the first time i tried i actually couldn't lift it i couldn't flip it um and then i came back and i was able to lift it but i couldn't flip it and then i came back maybe a little bit later like a few days later and I was able to actually flip it for the first time. Actually, it was probably like probably like a a month after I first tried. I could actually flip it, and then just you know you get your technique better, you get your muscles get more adjusted to it, and then I can do like more and more each time I go. So it's you know it, it, when you when you first begin doing a certain type of exercise, you'll have a very high uh, high slope of progress. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Your progress versus your time. Yeah. yeah, it'll be a very steep slope. And then it patters out of it. Yeah, yeah. and then it'll, it'll yeah. even out. It's like a root it. function. Pretty, pretty much. much. And it, after, after a few years of doing it, exercise, it'll pretty much plateau usually, unless you have a major overhaul. But so I think that's kind of the philosophy behind um, CrossFit. CrossFit. <laughs> I can yeah. never remember that. Is, CrossFit. Uh, <laughs> is trying to constantly try and do new exercises every time yeah so it's always tricking your body into growing and building new muscles and all that muscle fatigue. yeah yeah exactly mm-hmm. um yeah i never done it yeah but it seems yeah. pretty cool yeah it's pretty good yeah. but uh, as long as you have someone to like make it for you because i can't bother to research a new thing to do yeah, every time exactly. it's way too much work yeah. something that something like an analogy i saw uh, a few years ago on this youtube channel that should I say? I don't know. He's called he's called Max Williams. Fine. Sure. I haven't watched him in a couple of years, but he had this one video. He he does he does a bunch of like fitness stuff, and he had a really good analogy that I sort of picked up for fitness. It was that fitness is like a three legged stool. Okay. You can like and with it being a recovery, diet, and exercise. Those are the three legs. So if two of them are super strong, but one of them isn't there, then you won't really make any progress. You know, the stool will fall over with only two legs. It's sort of the same way. Because if, like, you're following a great routine, a great workout routine, you're working out four or five days a week, and you're active every day, you know, um, but you're sleeping, like, five hours a night, and you're eating terrible food, you probably won't make that much progress unless you're like 14 then you can do whatever the hell you want <laughs> and yeah, you can you recover. recover yeah but right. yeah if you're if you're if you're grown <laughs> then you need you need all three to be in place for for optimal optimal results or even like just good results or like for instance if you're like if you're sleeping i would say this is actually the ideal if you're sleeping really really well like you're getting eight hours a night you don't really need you don't need like as much sleep as possible. You can probably stop at eight or eight or nine, but I've I've never needed more than like eight and a half in my whole life. But but yeah, like let's say you you're sleeping well, you're eating healthy food, but you your program is like okay. I would say that's actually ideal because then you're a healthy human, but you're just not gonna become as strong. But you'll be healthy at least. Unless you're like completely sedentary and not moving at all. I find nowadays people sort of ignore recovery or at least like downplay it a lot. I talk to a lot of people who are, you know, there's that whole thing like, I don't sleep. I'm always on the grind, you know, <laughs> yeah, those, yeah. those people. Like go to, the, go to the gym every single day, lift heavy every day. Yeah, like yeah. that's going to do nothing. Maybe if you, if you start going to the gym like that, uh, Honestly, then, then you'll you'll make you'll make a little progress, but you but you'll plateau very soon. Yeah, I feel like it's what, I wouldn't want to start out that way either, really, because no. I feel like you'd injure yourself. Yeah, if you start out really intense. Especially. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, but yeah, because like I, I talk to a lot of people who are like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to get more fit and stuff. Like I I used to go to the gym for like a couple months ago. I went for like a solid like month or two, 
to the gym every single day, seven days a week. Um, but then I just don't feel the motivation anymore. And I'm like, yeah, you burnt yourself out. <laughs> you went, yeah. you went too often, you know, you don't have any place to grow then if you're going yeah. every day of the week and yeah. your, your muscles can't recover because you're always just pounding them. That's true. So. Yeah. You have to remember that this is, it's something, it's a long-term habit. Like this yeah. is a lifetime habit that you want to try and develop. So if you're trying to go every day. It's probably you're you're probably not gonna be able to maintain it. Try to do something every day. Yeah, that's but true. Something specifically yeah. going to the gym. It's it's not good to get very intense workouts every day. Yeah. Plus, the gym isn't honestly that much fun. No, not really. I like yeah. it. Like I, I like it in the winter because that's you fair. can't do yeah. anything outside here. Like I don't mind it. It's just yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's a it's a weird place to start going to. Once you've yeah. been there for for a while, then it's okay. Then you, get you get used, used to, to it. it. Yeah. Um, but it, it seems like a weird atmosphere and you've never gone before. Cause you're like, uh, you don't, oh, I don't use a machine or I'm look like a fool <laughs> yeah. or something like yeah. that. That is part of so, why I, I wanted to just kind of run because it's hard to screw that up. Yeah. Yeah. It's still possible. That's true. It is still but possible. It's yeah. difficult. So that's, that's basically, that's my whole philosophy. Eat pretty well, mm-hmm. sleep enough. And well, recovery is not just sleep too. Yeah. If you're never resting at all throughout the day, never giving yourself like a chance to breathe and you're always stressed out, then you're not going to be well recovered. Mm-hmm. If you're, you know, rushing to work, working hard all day, then have other commitments that you don't enjoy and you don't find relaxing. And then you only get time to, to rest when you're at home going to sleep. Mm-hmm. You know, that's hard to, hard to have a, have a chill life. <laughs> yeah. How do you make sure you get enough sleep? I mean, I don't every day. <laughs> <laughs> no? I, I mean, what do you do? Like, So I've had problems before with uh, staying on the computer for, well, for a long time, late at night. So stuff that I've done is use um, an app called Cold Turkey, and I've used the Frozen Turkey app setting in it, which essentially just locks you out of your computer. Whoa. It just signs you out. At a certain you time, you can't do it. You can't do anything about yeah. it. Yeah, no. Yeah, <laughs> it just kicks you off. See that? That would be. I mean, I don't have a problem with going on my computer. Um, but have you ever been like finishing an assignment for school and it like kicks you off? You're like, Shit, this is due tomorrow. <laughs> no, I've never really had that problem. I don't think. Uh, or because I find I find for me, this is still not good. But the only time. I'm on my computer late because I don't play the video games or anything. Yeah. Um, is when I'm like doing an assignment that I was like, I have got lots of time, and I I I start it kind of early, and then I feel good about myself, and then I don't do it for like a week, and then it's due the next day, and I'm like, shit, I have to actually do it. Um, all I did was write the title. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Uh, just read a very squiggly yeah, the. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> the. But so I, like I, it'll be like it'll be like one a.m. and I'm like finishing this. That's the only time I'm on my computer late. So I would that would not benefit me. That I mean it would it would make me sleep more, but it would make me academically worse. Or maybe it wouldn't. No, because because then yeah. you'd adjust to it, so you'd know. Oh, I have to finish it by this time tonight. Yeah. Then you just freak out about it earlier. I think which is good. Yeah, which is nice. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I think so. Because <laughs> then you have enough time to sleep. Yeah. But yeah, what I did is I started out pretty, like, chill. Like, shut it off at 12, and it comes back on at 6 or whatever. So it's just, all right, if I'm up at midnight, get the hell off the computer. You shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. And then slowly worked it back so I'd have time to, like, sleep more and, like, get ready for bed and stuff like that. Yeah. And right now, I think it's at, like, 12 to 8 or something. Like that. Okay, but I But I kind of want to expand it a little bit because get to sleep a little bit earlier mm-hmm. and have time to, like get ready for bed, maybe do some chores like dishes and stuff like that. Yeah, with with me, I just, I try to get off my phone in the evening because pretty much like the main technology I use regularly is like social media um, or like watching YouTube videos uh, until like really late, which is like, it's not the best, you know, you're like just watching one or two more videos. Yeah. And then... But they're like twenty five minute videos, and then you're like, I up for an extra hour longer than I wanted. Like, I'll find actually I'm more productive when 
in my off time, I w- watch TV shows rather than YouTube because because I have like a shorter attention span. I'll watch like a bunch of short YouTube videos. And so it won't feel that long, but it's like an hour. Yeah. Um, um, like six, 10 minute videos versus watching one episode of a TV show. It feels like a lot more of a break because the whole episode of something, but it's only like 22 minutes. And so then I'm satisfied and I'm like, all right, I'll get back to work and whatever. So that's, that's a, that's a very weird thing. But for me, Netflix makes me more productive than YouTube. Yeah, I don't so, do well with either, really. Uh, like, I'm very susceptible to the YouTube recommended algorithm. Oh, same. That's, that's why... I, Instead of watching six, I'll watch like 24 and end up there for like four or five hours, which yeah. isn't good. I remember yeah, yeah, one time I just went down a rabbit hole watching yeah, elephants listen, listen to musical music instruments. <laughs> Which is great. I would highly recommend it to anybody. That's okay. the most quality content I've ever seen in my entire life. But YouTube kept, re- kept re- recommending it. I'm like, oh, it's so cute. And then I'm like, it's been an hour and a half. But yeah, that's, that's, that's why I'm better with like, TV shows. Because like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm never like, I want to watch like eight episodes at a time. Because after one or two, I'm like, yeah, that's enough. <laughs> um, so then I always get back to work or whatever. But I was reading another article. Yeah. The scientific validity of which I do not know. It might be complete bullshit, but <laughs> okay. who's to say, really? You know? Yeah, sure. All right, um, go on. And it was talking about uh, decision fatigue. Yeah, that's what I was just going to bring up. Yeah. yeah, decision fatigue. So if you wake up in the morning, you're like, okay, so I'm my clothes to wear, decide what I'm going to eat for breakfast, get to work, make many decisions at work, probably, even if you don't think you do, you probably do. Yeah. Um, and... Then you get home, you know, you decide what, you, what you're going to eat for lunch at work and stuff. And then you get home uh, and you're like, all right, I'm going to do some fitness, do some exercise. Then you you don't feel like it because you've already already done so much. And then like in the evening, you're much more likely to be unhealthy, like stay up late, eat eat worse food because you've been making decisions all day and you're tired yeah. of, of making hard decisions that you don't like. Don't you know that you feel like they're the right decision, mm-hmm. but like you're not giving in to impulse. Yeah. You know, resisting impulse all day is hard. Yeah, yeah. Very so good. you gotta you gotta find ways to make it easy. Yeah. For yourself. Like I wake up and I have pretty much the same thing for breakfast every day. I really yeah. I really like it. <laughs> so it That's makes good. it easy, but it's pretty healthy too. Because it's like oatmeal with fruit and yeah and stuff inside on um, peanut butter because peanut butter is like crack to me. <laughs> it's um, fair enough yeah yeah um and then like i make my lunches before like i told i said like i make it them all on sunday through the week i lay my clothes out the night before yeah um i go then i go to class whatever mm-hmm. and i have it written down on my board what exercises and what commitments mm-hmm. i have for each day like it makes it easy for exercise because then you're not like Oh, I'm tired. I'm just not going to do anything. I do something easy because like, mm-hmm. I don't feel like it. You don't have to decide on the day. You're like, okay, this is what I, I'm going to do. So you have to know yourself because you yeah. can't be like, I'm going to run a marathon every day. <laughs> it has to be like a Yeah, you can't head as I did. Yeah. Like, running yeah. It's, yeah, it's he insane. Can. He can. Yeah, he can. But he can drop and do seven in a row. Like. Yeah. <laughs> and again, it should be fitness stuff that you enjoy too, but it has to be like attainable stuff yeah. that you're going to stick with. Like, for instance, I'll be like, okay, today I'll go for a five kilometer run through the woods because mm-hmm. that's quite nice you can see all the trees and stuff go by the the water or whatever and then the next day like okay i'm gonna go do tire flips at the school because that's that's fun stuff like i, I actually like doing that because mm-hmm. you feel strong as hell <laughs> yeah um but so just just finding ways and same with healthy food like, yeah you don't have to eat like a pound of kale every day <laughs> because that's gross. And kale smoothies are good, though. I've actually never tried a kale smoothie. I don't I've like been kale having much. them a lot. They're really good. Huh. Yeah. Never tried. Maybe I will. I probably won't buy kale to be honest, but I don't own a blender. Oh, so I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, just like you know, it doesn't have to be everybody's like you know, rice and broccoli and chicken breast mm-hmm. with no seasoning. Like that's a little bit extreme. If you like. I don't know, like, one of my favorite foods is, like, my mom's tuna casserole, mm-hmm. which is, like, noodles with, like, mushrooms and tuna inside. It tastes okay. really good because it's got, like, seasoning and stuff in it. 
And so, like, that's pretty healthy because, like, you got protein, carbs, and fats inside from the, the some of the fats and the, the all the protein from tuna, and then mm-hmm. the carbs from the noodles and the mushrooms and stuff. And mm-hmm. some of the, and there's like some cream inside too, so it's more fat. Yeah, but it's like it's it tastes good, but it's also like pretty healthy. Because if you're always yeah. like, I'm gonna eat this food that I don't like, but it's super healthy for oh, me you all can't the time. Do that. Yeah. yeah, then you'll just no. when you don't feel like when you don't feel like eating that, you won't eat anything healthy. You'll just eat like the most like binge impulsy food ever like i'm gonna eat three smokes poutines or something yeah. like or you'll just not end up eating at all it's like ah there's nothing yeah or just not at all which, yeah. is, which is not which is also not good yeah that's never fun yeah that happens sometimes so, so you, you gotta do these things but try yeah. to make it easy you don't have to jump <laughs> right into being the rock day one yeah no i think that's a really important the decision fatigue and trying to know yourself make the right decision the easiest one or trying yeah. to trick yourself into doing right things. Yeah. One like way. like like those those moms who put spinach inside brownies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. God damn. <laughs> That's that still seems like it would be bad for you. <laughs> yeah, no, probably not great. Yeah, honest. it it's honestly probably not worth it. No. Don't yeah. do it. Yeah, no. I just make just make regular brownies or dumb naked. Yeah. Don't do it halfway. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, yeah, just Anyways, saying. I was gonna say, I saw a really good example of it one time on YouTube by a YouTuber called uh, I think it's pronounced like Leffy or something. Like E L E F I E. Anyway, oh, okay. she she does a lot of good like minimalist content. I thought you were gonna say Leafy, and I'm like, oh no. Yeah, I know. No, it's not him. <laughs> it's an unfortunately close name, but yeah. she does some really good stuff. Um, one of it, she was explaining, she was trying to get herself to go to the gym yeah. more often uh, or most days. So what she do is she take all of her toiletries and <laughs> put them in the in her car. <laughs> was not what I was expecting. No, I know, right? But that'll do it. It's so out there. Maybe, I don't know. So if she didn't want to go to the gym, she'd have to get up and then walk outside in yeah. like whatever she's wearing to sleep and like grab her toiletries and then go back in Wouldn't and take a shower or whatever. But if she were to go to the gym, she would get on, get into her gym clothes, get in her car, drive to the gym, work out, shower oh, there, and then come back. Very good. So she's already having to go outside to her car. Yeah. So, something yeah. I would do that was that was good like that it was more when I was like going to the gym regularly. Now it's it's easy to make myself go because I'm just going for a run outside or playing a sport, which is super fun. But um, so I don't really that that doesn't fatigue me that much. But uh, was I would I still do pack all my stuff for the night before. But I would I I, I bike to school or or in the winter I bus and walk to school. But I would pack my workout clothes and shoes in my bag. And even like a post workout snack or whatever, because then I would just build it into my schedule. Because I would like that would just be I would, I would it would feel pointless having my gym stuff inside my bag and not going because I'm like I already have it and I'm it's like a two minute walk from this lecture I just finished. Like you may as well go right now because it's like you're gonna feel better. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't really fit all of my stuff comfortably in like my workout stuff and like a lunch because like I'm on campus for 12 hours I can't go home so like uh what I did was at my gym you can rent lockers so I got that Mm. and put kept my shoes and like shower sandals in there and towel and everything oh yeah that makes sense yeah and then all I needed to bring was a fresh pair of clothes to work out in yeah Yeah. see that's all I had to bring too yeah like I guess I had to bring shoes too but I always kept those to outside my bag oh okay basketball player because I am Weird. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but because they have like, a towel service at yeah. the, the gym and stuff. But yeah, so it just made it so easy to just yeah, go. It easy. Yeah, it barely takes up any space in the bag and yeah. might as well go. Minimal decision of fatigue is ideal. Yeah, that is always the best way to go. Yeah, it was it was a really weird thing for me, but yeah, you the same thing for breakfast every day. It's definitely not for everybody. And not every single day. Yeah. Like, obviously, when I go home, my dad usually makes crepes every mm-hmm. Sunday and stuff. Okay, yeah. Like, I'll have those. He's not going to be like, no, dad. <laughs> Get out of here with your f***ing crepes. Crepes. Because they're fine. People like food inside. It's pretty healthy. Like, it doesn't matter. It took away a whole aspect of, like, oh, what am I going to have for breakfast? It's like, well, this is just, this is just what I eat for breakfast. Yeah. So, I can't... I don't really like doing that yeah. I, I end up doing that out of the fact that i just can't be bothered to figure out what to eat yeah. so i just end up doing that but i really hate it like i find that food is better if it's newer or if i haven't like tried it before uh, or whatever well, that's, you know? me for, that's me for dinner usually 
I I really like I'm super explorative for food. Um, yeah, like I want to be trying a lot of new things a lot of time. Yeah. If I'm just eating the same thing again and again, I just get so miserable. Like yeah, I find I find for lunch for lunch and dinner it can be like that. But for breakfast, I'm still half awake. I haven't even had my coffee yet because I have that after breakfast. <laughs> so I'm like it just it just gets me started. So because I also I also eat like half an hour after I wake up. So. If I was more awake, maybe it would, it would bother me. But no, I wake I, I wake up pretty hungry. Oh yeah, one other thing that yeah. I'd like to recommend, just for anyone listening, is that if you want to try and lose weight, if that's a goal you have, yeah. getting a smart scale is pretty sweet. What is a smart scale? Um, so it's a scale like I got one, and it comes with like an app that'll connect to your phone with Bluetooth. Oh. Yeah, so it'll track all your weight over time, yeah. and it'll actually send it to my Fitbit app too, which wow. is pretty sweet. Yeah, and the nice thing about that is that you know how your weight it, it fluctuates day to day. Yeah, you shouldn't be like weighing yourself every day, really. No, but even week you, to you week, you weigh like an extra like two or three pounds in the evening, like in the day. Yeah, I never so, really weigh myself in the evening. I'm yeah. pretty consistent with the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but That's just good. day to day, like it can change. I I try to expect yeah. like five pound difference. If you like a salty day. dinner or something that before you only came more water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's really nice because. With the smart scale, you can open up the app and see your graph and see like all time as all your history. So I'm like, all right, I'm up a little bit right now, but compared to a year ago, I'm still pretty, yeah. pretty nice and doing pretty good. Yeah. So it's, it takes out a lot of the like negative thinking or going, ah, mm-hmm. no, I'm doing bad. Like, ah, I, I got to stop I may as well just less. give up. Yeah, exactly. Or like it stops you from doing really unhealthy things like trying to like limit your food. Yeah, or just much, like starving like yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I mean. Um, so that's nice. That yeah. it's a good way to pretty objectively see your progress yeah. all the time. As as like an example for why you shouldn't weigh yourself like every day all the time. Yeah. Um, because it 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 does accurately reflect how your body composition is changing. Um, for wrestling one year, I was wrestling at the what was it the seventy sixty seven to seventy two kilo uh, class, and I was. 72.7 at the weigh-ins. We went early to the weigh-ins. Yeah. So he's like, okay, you have an hour to try to lose 0.7 of a kilogram. Of 72.7 kilograms going. Up. Okay. I don't know how much it is in pounds. Um, so then I just wore like three sweaters for the entire hour. I was just sprinting up and down the stairs and doing like push-ups and jumping jacks and stuff. Yeah. And I lost and like went to the washroom, obviously, because you got it. Um, yeah. And I lost a kilo in an hour. But wow. do you think I lost a kilo of fat? No. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> yeah, see, that, like, that's how much stuff like water yeah. can make a difference. Because like, I didn't lose a kilo of fat, obviously. I probably didn't lose any fat. No. Um, it not. was just like, just, you know, water and biological processes mm. and stuff. Um, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so don't like, don't like eye on the scale every single day. And if it goes up by like a couple pounds, then you 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 reverse your pro- your progress like it's, yeah, it's gradual no, yeah it, it'll go up and it'll go down i think some people if they're like capable of like really understanding like yeah it's going to change maybe then you can do it but honestly i wouldn't recommend it yeah, uh, well, you, yeah. you're talking about fitness apps and stuff my phone thinks i'm the most unfit like unactive <laughs> piece of shit really because i never take it when i'm running or playing oh, sports okay. or anything yeah and I bike everywhere. Yeah. So I don't know if it counts biking steps, like as steps. I, no I don't idea. think it does. Yeah. But so every day <laughs> it'll be like, you got like a thousand steps. <laughs> like actually, because usually yeah. if I'm going for like a long walk, I'll leave it at home. Or if I'm, okay, if I'm yeah. going for a run, like my running shorts don't have pockets. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I can't, I can't bring it with me. Mm-hmm. Um, I also can't remember music. I never oh. been able to, which is weird. Most people only yeah. have music, but, um, but yeah, so at the end of the at the end of the week, it'll be like you got ten thousand steps like this entire week. <laughs> like please, please do more. You're very unhealthy. And I'm like, shut up, phone. You don't know me. Oh, but, that's funny. Yeah, but I, I didn't even install that app. Into, like it's just part of the phone. Yeah, I yeah, the Google Fit that. or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I'm like, Can you stop? that's funny. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I kind of like about the Fitbit is yeah. that it doesn't have all the same drawbacks that the phone has, all the notifications, distractiveness, and, like, clunkiness. Yeah. Like, yeah. I find that, like, in, like, a regular pair of gym shorts, my, like, six-inch display just falls right out of my pocket. Yeah. Like, all exactly. the time. 
<clears throat> so I don't even keep it on me. And you don't the, keep that thing on you. <laughs> exactly. You don't. Yeah, and the, the Fitbit's just it's perfect for anything exercise related. Yeah. Which is nice. I'm sure yeah, because it's like you know heart rate. Yeah. Whatever, like calories burn, maybe. I don't know. It does calories burn. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um one of the best things is the sleep tracking actually. That's nice. Yeah. I I don't understand how you wear a watch when you sleep. My sister does that too. She has a Fitbit mm-hmm. and it says exactly how much sleep she gets per night. Yeah. And yeah. I cannot sleep. Like I can't even nap with my watch on. I have oh, to really? take it off every time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Same with my like necklace. I can't I can't sleep with a necklace or a watch on. Yeah, I wouldn't want a necklace. Like that would feel like it's choking you. <laughs> yeah. That that'd be weird. Yeah, and right. that is kind of annoying. I I would like it if it I could like turn off the screen at night or something. Oh, is it bit. like on? No, it it's usually um black. Oh, okay, go away, black go. like yeah. that. But then if I move my arm, it'll like light up <laughs> the room. Ah. It's like ah, stop it. Yeah. So I have to be like slowly moving my arm, which is always annoying. But yeah, it's really cool. Like shows all my sleep since I got the thing. Steps, calories, kilometers, floors, active minutes. How many floors do you walk today? Uh, 18. Damn. I've done 18 floors of stairs. Like up or down? Uh, or like up. Combined? Up. What I the? think that's just up, yeah. I guess because we walked, we walked up here twice. And then we walked uphill to that store. Yeah. And wow. I have other walking, I guess. You can probably go bus. Yeah, um, there are stairs in the go bus. Sure. Yeah. Half flight stairs. Yeah. I don't know how it adds up. Yeah. But yeah, oh, I find it's actually pretty good. Uh, yeah, I feel like it would be. My sister definitely loves yeah. it. Yeah, it was funny. Like, when I first got it for the first couple of weeks, I tried to get like hundreds of floors every day. Because, mm-hmm. like, every time there'd be a break in school, I'd just like walk out of the classroom and go run up and down a flight of stairs. Oh, yeah. Like, five flights of stairs, yeah. like up and down oh. once or twice, just because. <laughs> to try and max it out. Okay. So, yeah, it was a good time. Something something I've always wondered about exercise is why is it that some people like really enjoy exercise like like myself like I don't if I like I usually take one or two rest days a week where all I do is like I do my like morning calisthenics and then I just sort of like go for a walk or something and that's it um like and I do that once or twice a week but if I don't if I'm not if I'm not like active like I don't I don't feel right, you know? Like I just feel kinda weird. But some people like feel like gross when they work out. Why like why is that, do you think? I cause I have no idea. Cause it like it's never I guess since I was like twelve and I started like running, it's never been it's 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 never been hard for me to motivate myself to get exercise because I've just it'll be it's like exercise you feel really whack. So I don't. I don't know. What do, what's your take on that? Yeah, I'm not sure what it is exactly. And where would you say you fall? At the moment, definitely at the on the not exercising much. And you feel like alright. Honestly, not really. <laughs> <laughs> See, maybe you're actually, like... I I have become more on the side of I need to exercise. Yeah. To feel yeah, like, definitely. To feel good. I don't know. All I can think of is like inertia and building habits. Maybe, so it's something yeah. that you get used to. I think your muscles just, for some reason, like, get used to getting the stretch, getting the activity. Yeah. But it does feel so weird. To go from, like, working out very frequently. Like, whenever I, like, um, want to go on a trip or whatever for, like, a week, you know, you're not going to, there's no, if you're going to, like, rainforest in Tobago, very nice place. But they're, <laughs> they're not really, like, all I'm really doing is, like, walking and swimming in the ocean. Um, So... There, there isn't like you. You feel like you feel like kind of weird when you get back, <laughs> but uh, so that, you notice it. But, yeah, I definitely yeah. notice it. I think that's that's one of the problems that a lot of people have when they talk, like people who do exercise and people who this don't. Is it, this yeah, because kind of, they're like, well, just just do it because it feels good, yeah. right? And then people are like, no, it doesn't. It feels it feels <laughs> bad. Yeah, because when when you're exercising regularly, it feels so awful to like skip a day and yeah. not be active. So it's, you feel like you have to, and you really want to. Yeah. But <laughs> it's the exact opposite yeah. feeling. Yeah. I, yeah. I feel like I feel like that's why there is like such a. I feel like there's a, there's a growing disparity in in fitness. Like I feel like, of course, it wasn't. I wasn't there. But like back, you know, in like I don't know, like when our grandparents were our age like maybe like the 
fifties, you know, sixties, like the sixties. Um, m- most like people weren't, nobody was like lifting. That was like like nobody really did that. Yeah, like there were there were yeah there were strong men, but that was like rare. That wasn't like a regular thing. And but like everybody was like pretty okay. But yeah, so it was like less people. You didn't have like your insanely fit people that you have now. But you also didn't have like three hundred and fifty pound people like like five foot five foot eight three hundred and fifty pounds you know like which now it's like very common to have people who just like are really out of shape like you wouldn't look twice like i I remember it was like I saw the this comparison picture it's like the biggest man on earth in like nineteen twenty is the same size as like there was just a picture of like an average like cop in New York City. They look like the exact same size. <laughs> um, and so I, f- I feel like that's sort of the thing because it's like now it's like either you work out at like an intense level and you're like super into that. So you're like very athletic or you just it's hard to break into. So you just don't get any exercise at all because um, you feel like oh, I just don't get exercise. And then you just like it, you're just very unfit. Like I feel like it's, it's, it's a growing it's a growing sort of divide. Interesting thought. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, I think probably a lot of it has to do with the increasing like technology, both in like food and fitness. Like yeah. people are able to scientifically get more fit. Yeah. Like, they know exactly know, when to rest, macros, when to do. We know yeah. about protein, fats, carbs, calories, you know what to eat. Yeah. But like, like all the all the different vitamins and minerals and what they do and stuff. But then on the other hand, there's also a lot of science and engineering that goes into a lot of foods these days <laughs> yeah. that are not good for you. And are yeah. designed to be as addictive as possible yeah. to get you to keep coming back to the stores and to the fast food places. And I guess now it also is possible to be a functioning member of society while not leaving your room. This is very <laughs> yeah. true. Yeah, like you could. Yeah, you could if you wanted to. If you had like a job where you only worked online or by the phone, like if you're like a web developer or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you don't really have to go out. You don't have yeah. to go outside at all. You can like just order all your food in. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, whereas like back in the day, you had to like at least, at least go to leave work. The house, yeah. Work was probably at least a little physical. You probably have to walk around, maybe. Probably. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> so. yeah. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. I never thought of this before, but you know how it's kind of similar to um, a lot of social media companies. They they optimize and they engineer to get view time and keep people on their sites as long as possible because yeah. that increases ads. It's kind of the same model for fast food places. Yeah. It's they want you to stay in the store as long as possible and buy as many of their products yeah. as possible, come back as many times as possible. <laughs> so they're, they're looking at the same metrics almost, like weekly and monthly active like users yeah. or active customers. Yeah. Did you get that from Super Seven? I did not, no. Oh, I, that, I just thought about that now. Did they talk about that? Then? I think so. I have to say I do have I do have um a soft spot for either ramen or subway. If I just like if it's like exam time mm-hmm. and I just don't feel like cooking, I could eat subway like literally every day of the week for either lunch or dinner. That's fair. Or eat ramen for dinner, like like not not instant ramen, like ramen restaurants. Okay. Um, I don't think I've ever been to a ramen restaurant. Oh, it's so good. Like. Yeah. It's because it, it sort of feels like a home cooked meal, so it doesn't. Hmm. I don't guess it isn't as oh, bad. That's cool. Because it's just like. They make their noodles there, and it's just some soup and some like fatty pork or eggs or something. Inside. Is it like the same thing as you see in animes where they go up to like the stand on the side of the road? Like Naruto? I haven't seen that, but like oh. I think they do. They did that a lot in like Mob Psycho. I like, hey, we'll go get well, ramen. Probably, yeah. Yeah, it's probably um, the same thing. It's so good. <laughs> like, yeah. It's speaking of which, a Naruto is a fish cake that's inside uh, a ramen. Hmm. So where's my came from? Interesting. Yeah. Good name, I hate. Yeah. Cool. But no, it's so much better. You go try it. All right. But <laughs> yeah, that sounds speaking good. of which, yeah, that's one of the fast quote fast food places that I go to a lot. Hmm. But I feel like it's just because Subway and Ramen don't you don't like they're they're not as bad. So I can yeah. justify it better in my brain. They don't feel as bad. No, they don't feel as bad as eating like two cheeseburgers. Because yeah. then you just feel like you're gonna throw up after because they're like just gross. Because sometimes you just need that every once in a while. I, I usually eat out like once a week. I don't know, like it's it's nice. And like you go with friends sometimes, sometimes you just go alone. But yeah. I don't know, I, like I, I like going to restaurants sometimes because then it's just like you feel like you're going to chill because you don't need to make food that night. That's it's true. Nice. Yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah. But yeah, it's not fair, really. That's just me. You know, okay, so yeah. is that 
Are we all wrapped up here? <laughs> what you want to say? A wrap. Food. Oh, actually, uh-huh. yeah, no, I got you. Actually, that wasn't intentional. But anything else I want to add, are we good? I think we're good. Can I go back to my dungeon? <laughs> that I live yes. in all the time? You are dismissed.